Hi, I'm here today to show you the ARP 2600M. It's our amazing recreation of the original 70s synth in a slightly smaller form. It's 60% of the size, but everything's in there. We've even added a few extra things like USB and MIDI. And I've got it hooked up here with this micro key controller, which is a USB controller, plugged straight into the 2600M. You can actually use any USB class compliant device. And I'm also going out of the audio outputs, but if you want to, you can use the speakers which are built in, which should sound great. And you've got headphones as well. So you've got choices how you want to listen to it. So at the moment, it's in an initialized state. So that means everything is kind of zeroed and we're ready to just start exploring it. So just to give you a quick talk through the panel, we've got a three VCO synth here. So VCO is uh, another name for oscillators. Um, that's where the basic sound and the building blocks are formed. Then you've got a, a mixer section where you can bring in different portions of the sound, in, including a noise generator and a ring modulation. Then you've got your filter here. We've actually included both types of the original filters from the 2600 in there. And you've got two envelopes as well. So you've got an attack and release envelope and an ADSR as well, which you can send to different parts of the synth. Then you've got your VCA where you decide which parts of the synth you actually want to listen to and an initial gain, which is really handy to create drones. And at the end of the signal chain there, you've got a reverberator, which is basically a spring reverb. It's got a real spring reverb in there, which sounds fantastic. You've also got your preamp, so you can actually pl plug in external devices as well. And then down the bottom here, we've got a noise generator and the controls for that, and voltage processors, so you can change and manipulate the signals and then a sample and hold generator, which will animate your music really nicely. Okay, so let's start having a listen. So at the moment, I've got VCO1 turned up in the mixer, so I'm listening to this sort of module here. And as you can hear, it's a square wave, and it's normaled as a square wave. So what that means is it's pre-patched behind the scenes, so you don't have to do any patching at all if you don't want to. That's called a semi-modular synth, and that's what the ARC 2600M is. So we've got a square wave, but if we want to change that waveform, we can just go out of the sawtooth jack and into the VCO1, and suddenly we've got a saw wave instead, which is really cool. Now, you can use the mixer here to listen to your different oscillators. So let's bring in oscillator two instead which is also normaled as a square wave, as you can hear. But you can do other things within here. So for instance, you can start tuning it. Including fine tuning, you can change the pulse width. So what that does is it changes the shape of the waveform in that case. Once you get into the mixer section, you can then um, start listening to the different um, oscillators. So for instance, oscillator three is normaled as a saw wave as well. And you've also got a ring modulator as well. So by bringing that, that up here, you can get all those really cool sci-fi effects. So into the filter section, You've got your filter here, your frequency, with resonance. And as I said, you've got both types of filters included as well, from the original 2600. Different revisions of different uh, models have different filters. So let's stack up three different oscillators. And move on into the envelope section. So here we can adjust the attack and the release. But we also have a secondary envelope here, a proper ADSR envelope. So a little bit of a, a more fully blown envelope, if you like. And you can send that to different places. So for instance, we could send it um, to the oscillator to put an envelope on the pitch or we can send it to the filter so you can get that really 
really that really snappy sound if you if that's what you're going for. You can also re-trigger the um, envelope manually as well. So that's really handy if you just want to get a quick snap of the snapshot of the sound, or you're not using a MIDI controller and you're just using it on its own. You can you can trigger the sound this way. Into the VCA section. So this is where you decide which parts of the synth you actually want to hear. So at the moment, as you can see, we're hearing the VCF. So the filter section, we're hearing the envelope AR. Uh, as well, but if we wanted to hear, hear the ADSR instead, we can do that, and we can just switch them in and out, which is really handy as well. Then at the end, we've got our amazing spring reverb I was talking to you about earlier, so let's bring that in so you can hear it. You'll also notice on my controller here, I can shift octaves, which is really useful. So we've also got a noise generator in the mixer section. So we can listen to it by bringing up the level here. And then these are the controls for it. So let's bring up the level to max so that you can hear your noise. And then we've got different types of noise from white through to pink. And obviously you can shape that then with a the filter and make drum sounds and all kinds of different sound effects with the noise generator. That's also linked to the sample and hold generator. So the sample and hold allows you to add some motion to the sound because it has a pulse to it. So it's also pre-patched to the oscillators. So for instance, if we bring up VCO1 there, get rid of the noise, and then bring up the level, the sample and hold, and the rate. You can hear you get start getting some motion randomized pitch basically at the rate of your choosing but what's also cool is you can send that sample and hold to different places so for instance I could go sample and hold out into my filter so then I can bring up this control and you can hear it. instantly you get that really nice bubbling kind of murmuring away and once you start bringing in some resonance as well, you get that kind of motion to your sound. And of course, we can stack up the oscillators as well. And of course, you can also bring in the pitch as well. To really get that randomness going, you can also use this switch here. So, what that does is it automatically gives you a gate trigger. So, the clock is still being sent from the sample and hold to here. So, I turn that on, and then you can hear you've got that lovely kind of arpeggiated type effect. So although this is a mono synth, it is possible to play two notes simultaneously um, and use it like a paraphonic synth. So what we can do is we can take a patch cable and go out of keyboard CV2 and into oscillator 2 keyboard CV. And what that does is it splits out the notes. So then if I bring up a second oscillator, so oscillator 2 here in my mixer, I can actually play two, two notes simultaneously. So I can play harmonies. If I play just a single note, it sums those two oscillators together. But as soon as I play two notes, it splits them out. If I want to use my mod wheel here on my controller, I can just go mod CV out here and then into my filter, for example, and I can start controlling my filter from my mod wheel. Which 
which is a really handy place to have that position rather than me having to leave the panel, especially if I'm playing two notes. I could also do portamento. So although there isn't a control for it on here, I can easily patch that in. So let's take my square wave there with quite a nice long release on it. And I can go out of keyboard CV1 into my lag processor, which is really useful because what that does is it essentially will delay the signal and I can go back in to my VCO1 here. So once I start increasing this, you hear the portamento come in. Let's add some spring reverb to that as well. I've also got my multiple slots here as well. So if I wanted to apply that effect to multiple oscillators, all I need to do is go out of there and then into the mult, out into one, and then out also into the second oscillator. So now I'll do that same effect on both simultaneously. <laughs> So you get that really nice portamento effect. A great feature of the ARP 2600M is the preamp section. So that means you can bring in external signals and manipulate them and send them through the synth. But you can also send the internal sounds through it as well. So let's patch that in. So I've got my saw wave here. And I'm going to go out of the filter section into the preamp. And then I'm going to go back out of the preamp and loop it back into the filter. So instantly you can hear there's a lot more drive and gain there. You start getting that real overdriven, crunchy sound. So using the external input, I've got my Volker here. This is a Volker sample. I've just got a drum loop run running. As you can see, it's going through the preamp and I can adjust the level, and what's really cool is you can really overdrive it if you want to get that real crunchy drum sound. We'll just leave it clean for now. And then it's fed into this section and I can control the level. I can even send it to my spring reverb if I want to. If I wanted to, I could plug into my filter section or any other section and manipulate the sounds that way. What's also cool is that you can clock the tempo of the sample and hold generator to the Volker. So I can just go internal clock out and then sync in and then my pattern will sync to the Volker sample. And obviously the right here will be the tempo. So connectivity wise, really well specced. It's all down the left side here. So you've got your power, of course. You've got left and right audio outputs as well as your headphones on the front here. MIDI wise, you've got regular MIDI with MIDI dip switches so you can select the channel. You've got USB MIDI as well, two sockets for USB, so one for your computer and one for a MIDI controller like this one, which can be best powered. So there you go, that's the 2600M, go and check it out.